Today on Weekly Recharge, we review Bowser's Fury. Bowser's Fury is set in Lake Lapcat, where he teams up with Bowser Jr. to help his dad, Bowser, just chill out. And that's the story of Bowser's Fury. Does Bowser chill out? Does Mario defeat Bowser? I guess you'll have to see. Might be one of those hidden twists, you know? This Mario game is experimental, so it is possible that he loses in the end of this. Bowser goes full on Thanos. Bye-bye, Mario. Bye-bye. That'd be great, right? No, it's not that experimental, but this game is quite experimental, and uh, let's talk about it. Unlike the other Mario games, Bowser's Fury is set in an open world, a beautiful 3D uh, sunshine-esque world with nice gray-blue tones. Uh, this game is gorgeous to look at. I like the tone of it. Lots of cool bluish gray tones for an island setting. In the distance, you always have the looming threat, which is Bowser himself in a giant Godzilla-like form, ready to wreak havoc and just ruin your day by making the gameplay just that much harder. The scale is just breathtaking. Bowser is ginormous and it really shows. A lot of games when they do big and epic looking things, the scale is the one thing they usually don't pull off quite as well. But Bowser here is looming. He's a giant threat. There is some great use of scale in this game. I love how Bowser looks in this game. The, the Godzilla Bowser is my favorite iteration of Bowser of all time. There has been word of stuttering and slowdown in this game, especially in handheld mode. I have personally played it only on handheld mode, and I haven't seen too much slowdown that actually affected my gameplay. There is, of course, some slowdown. If you are a person that counts frames, maybe it will affect you, but for a normal homeboy like myself who doesn't care about the frame counting, uh, no, it's not dropping off in such a way that it's bugging me, especially for what they're pulling off. And for me, it runs very well on the Switch all things considered, and even then, it doesn't hurt gameplay. So, the slowdown, not a big deal. What's also different about this game is the movement set. Mario's movements are a little more stiff, a little more like the original 2D Mario games. Very much so like 3D World, essentially because that's what this game is packed in with and where the inspirations come from, as you can see by all the cat themes. You got your cat fire-breathing plants, you got your evil floating fiery cats, all kinds of cats for you. All kinds of cats. In all the other 3D Mario games, you have a punch button or a kick button. In this case, you do have the cat suits or the other suits to replace that, which I can see is why they didn't add the punch or the kick because there's plenty of suits and you will not run out of suits. What's great about Bowser's Fury is the experimentation, as I've said before. The idea of an open world Mario game, as we saw with Odyssey, Odyssey was getting bigger, the maps were getting larger. I think this also pushing it further than that, having a larger open world with smaller, tiny island spaces as the levels per se, is an interesting take and one that I actually quite enjoy. And I feel like this could be an interesting direction for Mario games in the future. Which leads me to my one major criticism of this game, which is this game is repetitive. Now, no more than any other Mario game. You have your blue coins, you collect your stars, you chase your evil Luigi, you go to the top of the course to find your cat shine, you grab a key to open a cage, and you rinse and repeat with a few more ideas added on here as well. This is not new to Mario. You will see this in all Mario games. Even beloved games like Mario 64, a lot of them have blue coins. A lot of them have the star on the top. A lot of the games are essentially doing the same thing over and over again on each level. But the facade that was once there because each level used to be segmented and separated is now fully in view. As the open world makes the Mario game seem more repetitive because each new island holds very similar goals, making it feel a lot more like a Ubisoft open world game, Assassin's Creed, what have you. You get to see in full view that Mario this whole time has been repeating the same objectives over and over again for 35 plus years. Now this isn't a horrible thing, it's just something that I've noticed. The repetitiveness of this game is at least very much enjoyable. The things that you are doing are the same, but the courses 
make it so those same objectives are a little bit different. Following Luigi, although it is the same thing you are doing, is very much different in different courses because of his movement patterns. And same with finding stars and other things like that, blue coins, uh, races, all those things are gonna be a little bit different because they're different courses. And that kind of helps it out, makes the repetitiveness feel fun and enjoyable. Yes, it is repetitive, but it's fun repetitiveness. It's not boring in any way, at least to me. I enjoyed it the whole time through, especially since this game is only three to six hours long. It does not overstay its welcome, which is nice. I kind of like that it's a short experience for me. I am a dad. I do not like to have these big, long 30 hour games. I like to have a shorter experience. I like to get in, get out. And this really scratches that itch specifically. Another major aspect of this game is the boss fights. Bowser's boss fights, the Giga Bowser against the Giga Cat Mario is an epic boss fight and one of the better Mario boss fights. I really enjoy them. Yes, they are repetitive, but again, so is every Bowser fight. It has been this way since the beginning. Bowser starts off with a simple move set. His move set grows and he gets a little bit harder each time. Usually the maps are very similar. In this case, the map set is the open world, which you've been playing in. And it is uh, epic. It is fun. I really like these boss fights. I like that Mario can toss things at Bowser. And there are moments where Bowser is truly just throwing everything he has at you. Are they difficult? No, this game isn't a difficult game. Game. There is some difficult platforming here and there, but overall, you are not going to have a hard time with this game. You might die a couple times, but there's no real punishment. It's a Mario game. It hasn't been punishing for a while. So if you're looking for a challenge, I would say this game is a little more difficult than Mario Odyssey, but not much. I would say I enjoy it a little bit more than Odyssey in some ways because I feel like the platforming is a little more solid in this game than in Odyssey. Odyssey, you are given in my opinion, way too many stars. And it essentially becomes a collect-a-thon similar to Banjo-Kazooie or what have you. The platforming in this game, although the moveset is a little more stiff, I do feel like is a little more challenging and that these small island maps are created for platforming in mind, while Odysseys are a little more exploratory and less platforming was involved in that game, which for me, it's about the platforming. It's a Mario game. That's kind of why I like my Mario games. So I do believe that Bowser's Fury is a little more enjoyable in that way as a as a 3D Mario game. I can see if you are more of a collectathon Mario fan, that might turn you off. Now let's get into the price of the game. It is $60 for 3D World and Bowser's Fury. If you think about it, um, 3D World on the Wii U is $20 right now. Given the fact that it has been updated a little bit with increased speed and some other changes that made 3D World, I, in my opinion, a little bit better on the Switch, would say that adds $10 to that price for the 3D World game, then would say Bowser's Fury is what? $30 then? And if you put it that way, I do think Bowser's Fury is worth the price of admission. Again, you do have to pay the full price. So if you do not like 3D World at all, I realized then in that case, you are paying $60 for Bowser's Fury. I do not know if it is worth $60, essentially because the length of the game is probably not worth the price, but I do think it is worth 30. And me personally, I think 3D World is a nine. I do love 3D World very much. I do think it has aged poorly in camera controls just a little bit. Mario is a little difficult to control, especially when bouncing on Goombas and what have you. I feel like the camera is not horrible. It just isn't the best Mario has been. You especially feel that when you're playing Mario in this 3D space. It's much easier to attack enemies and move Mario within this world than it is in 3D world. So I feel like the movement is better displayed in a 3D space than it is in this 2D, 3D space. So I would knock 3D World for the camera. Other than that, 3D World is a nearly perfect game for me. Uh, I think the bite-sized nature of that game, especially the worlds being smaller, is perfect for the Switch, especially if you're a fan of handheld mode. So overall, if I were to score 3D World together, with Bowser's Fury, I would give this a 9.25. I believe this game is one of the best Mario experiences, and in my personal opinion, the best 3D Mario game on the Switch. I do enjoy Odyssey. I didn't enjoy it as much as 3D World or Bowser's Fury, and when they're both together, 
I think it's a better collection and a better game. But scoring Bowser's Fury by itself, I would give this game an 8.5. The reason being is that this game, although a fun experience, I think as the Mario team continues to experiment with these open worlds, we are going to notice the repetitiveness of these games a little bit more. And with that, I would like to see new experiences created uh, and not rely on old standbys like Blue Coins, Chasing Luigi, Racing, and so forth. I feel like we need some new gameplay loops and have more variety in our Mario games. And if they continue on with these bigger courses like this one, I do hope that they do look into that because I do feel like the games will suffer as time goes on. And again, uh, the facade will start to lose its luster, I think. So for me, Bowser's Fury, 8.5. With 3D World, a 9.25. What did you think of Bowser's Fury? Uh, did you love it? Do you enjoy this game? What do you think of 3D World? Are you surprised that it's so good? Or do you think it's worse than you remembered it? And if you're looking for more reviews, please look out for our review of Bravely Default 2, which will be coming in the next few weeks. Everyone, thanks for watching. Please leave your comments down below. Like, subscribe, and we will see you later. Bye.